to have a picnic. But, but Yogi, Mr. Gentlemen, welcome. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. This Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Go ahead and share out on your Facebook uh, feed. That it, let the ether world know that we're here. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to have all of you. And um, everybody say, God is good. God is good. And somebody else say, all the time. Hallelujah. All righty. Praise God. And thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, I have reached a big 6-4. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Janie gets on 6-2 on one Friday. Yeah, we have two years and two days in between us. For so um, we, cel we, we celebrate typically the date on the 1st. So she can get me day late, get her a day early. Although tonight we didn't feel like going out to going home and cooking after work, so we decided we're celebrating my birthday. <laughs> Just so we could go out and justify going out and getting something to eat. All right. Praise God. All right. We're on lesson 36 of the, of, um, the Bible in the Light of Our Redemption by E.W. Kenyon. This is the next to the last lesson. Um, we are... Uh, really closing in on the end of the book. And um, we're moving in tonight to te teaching on two kinds of knowledge. And as we've been teaching on the Bible in the light of our redemption, we have made, you know, there are, there are themes that have been majored on and, and pointed to, um, again, in light of our redemption, everything is pointing towards, and everything we've been learning towards um, redemption, okay, and, and the understanding of said redemption. Okay, um, let's look into uh, the two kinds of knowledge. Remembering that fallen man is a carnal, flesh-ruled being um, who, because of the fall, has um, learned to gain his knowledge um, from the wrong source, actually. And um, where, you know, um, what is the source of our knowledge? What are its limitations? And wh to what extent is the knowledge that we gain in this world insufficient to answer life's problems? Sufficient or insufficient? Fallen man, remember, before man fell, God and man communed together. God would come down in the cool of the day and fellowship with man. They, they had communion one with the other. Um, man, <clears throat> some of y'all probably saw 10,000 B.C. or whatever that movie was. Was it Raquel Welch? Back in the 60s, 10,000 B.C., you know, and they're all sitting around, ugga mugga, you know, um, and th they discover fire, and like, oh, you know. Amen. How many, how many of you saw Jungle Book, you know? Show me the secret to man's red fire, you know. Oh, ooby do. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, what was his name? Louis. King Louis wanted to, wanted to know the secret to man's red fire because if he had fire, he was, he was the elevation of man's knowledge or whatever. You know, we, we get this idea from, and it's, real, it's, it's based in evolutionary theory. You know, everything we evolved. <clears throat> we evolved. We evolved from a lower life for, so, source or being to a higher one, um, and in doing so, we evolved intellectually from a lower existence to a higher existence. It's just not true. I said it's not true. In creation, man was created in the image of God. In the image of God, created he him. Amen. And male and female created he them. Um, man's intellect allowed him to name all the creatures of the earth. 
yet there was not one found to be a help me. So then God took him, put him to sleep, took the bone out, the, you know, the rib out, made woman, you know. And they were not living as primal, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking primal beast, you know, scratching out food sources. Now the tree of the knowledge of, uh, of all the trees of the garden, they would freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they should not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die, or in dying thou shalt die. When Adam and Eve partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they died spiritually, they instantly began to degrade intellectually. Okay? Their wisdom became darkened by Satan's rule over their fault life. They became more and more carnal, flesh rule. They began more and more. Remember, um, the light went out. They knew they were naked. God came down, called them in the cool of the day. And uh, Adam says, I hid myself uh, for I was, we were naked. We were, we were afraid for we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree? Of course, God knew he'd eaten of the tree. And then the whole lion stuff started. Okay. And man's mind began to become more and more corrupt. And, and what we, would, we can refer to as the Antichrist mind. Operating under the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Now, we can see the degradation of the carnal mind. Uh, today, we're seeing it in ways that we haven't seen since Scott, Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, let's face it. Having a drag queen pride event that you're taking children to and let him cry up, climb up in the lap of, you know, said drag queen. And parents are okay with it. Now, see, that's the thing. Where are the instincts of protection that parents would normally have? They're embellishing and embracing this. They're taking their children and having them put on hormones to block their puberty so that they can have sex change transition operations at 10 years old. What kind of mind can do that? Only a perverse, degraded, degenerated mind. Yeah, people go, well, that just, it's about their feelings. So now, they be, they, now they're a flesh rule. It's about their feelings. How they feel about something. I had someone say one time in, in talking about the uh, about homosexuality. Now we believe it's a sin. It's a perversion against the things of God. <clears throat> Nature itself teaches us it's, it's perversion. Okay? Well, they need love too. But it's not love. It's lust. It is perverse physical Appetites. Okay. Well, this comes out of the carnal mind. That's why I say many of your super intellectuals are, and since we don't have any kids in here, sexually perverse. Because their minds are so twisted. And so they're very, a lot of them are, are just flat out perverts. But they're so intellectual. They have, you know, they have this degree and that degree. Yeah. You got a you got a dummy degree too. All right, so the fall of man, man fell, became carnal flesh ruled, and then his source, the mind, which at the in creation, gained its knowledge from God. Out of the realm of the spirit, now gains its knowledge because he's no longer in communion with God. No longer in fellowship with God. The light has gone out. He now begins to revert to the other part of his being and gaining his knowledge from his senses. Sight, smell, taste, sound, and touch. And they become the governing factors of where man gets his information from. Okay? I can't, I gotta touch it. I gotta smell it. I gotta see it. I gotta hear it. I gotta taste it. 
You got a baby on the ground crawling. What's it going to do when it finds something? Right there. Because that is, his, that is the highest sensory uh, sense operating in them at that point in time in their life. Okay? They cry, they eat, and they use the bathroom. And so the taste of food or, or flavor is, every, is, is the biggest part of their sensory input. Now, over time, it, others begin to develop, but taste is big. Okay? So, um, so man's knowledge becomes and comes out of this sense-ruled, sense-knowledge um, devolution. De 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 I'm not sure how you would pronounce that. De-evolution. Moving from gaining knowledge from God, from interaction with God, to interaction with your senses and things. So, this degraded into um, man's and taking things God created for marital relations to simply um, the carnal lust and appetite for pleasure. Okay? Just sheer pleasure. And so here's the thing about sin. When you do, when you do sin, you got to do more of it to get the same result or euphoric result that you got from doing it. Um, it might be you stole a piece of five cent candy from the candy store when you were a kid. And it was a thrill. You stole the five cent piece of candy. Got away with it. One piece ain't going to work next time. It's just, it's just the way the flesh is. You got to go for something bigger and you got to go for something bigger and you got to keep going up to, if the, if it was the thrill of doing it as to why you did it, you just have to increase, increasing that to get the same result. It's like drinking alcohol. Now I would say the, everyone in this room probably hasn't had anything to drink in a number of decades. Okay. Since you got born again. And unless you went to a liturgical church that used real wine and you just let kind of did that and, you know, you know, uh, and went on, you didn't, you didn't gulp it, you know. So you go out of here tonight and go get one regular beer and drink it. You're going to have a buzz. Guarantee it. You're going to have a buzz because you're not, you're not conditioned to drinking it. Well, okay. Well, the next time it's going to take more to get the buzz. And the next time it's going to take more to get the buzz. And if you're after the buzz, you've got to keep increasing that to reach that state. That's the way the flesh works. Okay? And that's how, you know, if you eat comfort food to satisfy and, and to deal with depression or sadness, let's face it, maybe... You know, the many dollar general pack of M&Ms worked the first time. But then the, you know, two of the six pack and then three of the, then the whole six pack is going to take, then it's going to take the mega bag. <laughs> okay. Because the flesh increases its desires the more it's fed. Okay. And so we, we train ourselves because of this world to gain information by our senses. All right? Uh, we, we, we judge all kinds of matters based on what we see, what we hear. You know? Well, I know they did such and such. Yeah, but the Bible says that love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. I can't help it. I saw it. Now, let me, get, let me share something with you. Um, two years ago, I had an incident at work. I had, had a situation where a student was trying to attack another student. And they were the same ethnic background, and uh, which wasn't mine. Okay? I was a different ethnic background. And I got in between them. I had, my arms, I had a walkie-talkie over here and a, and a clipboard over here because I was doing, I was on, on duty. 
And um, I got in between them and got to the person, actually a girl, who's going to try to attack another girl because she said she stole her earbuds. And this little girl's about a third the size of this one. I mean, this big old, big old girl. And she's over there cussing and screaming, we're going to kill her. I mean, she's going crazy. This girl's hollering, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. She's scared. So I get in between, hold my arms out, and, and kind of walk towards the other girl to try to back her off. She punches me in the face twice. I mean, wham, wham. Well, when she went for the third one, I dropped my, my equipment and went to wrap my arms around her, kind of like swing around behind and get my arms around and try to hold her arms down. Well, she collapsed to the ground when I did. <clears throat> well, I just rode her down, put her in a headlock, <laughs> and held her down there um, with my walkie, hollering, I need an SRO, I need an SRO, I need an SRO. Well, of course, what are the kids doing? Well, I left that night, the next, I left that night, no, the next night. Yeah, yeah, went in the next day, um, you know, I leave for Tulsa the next afternoon, I'm going out to Winter Bible, get a phone call from the family on Saturday, Daddy, it's all over the internet. They put your name out there, they said they're going to roll up on the house, I mean, he need, it, it, Edward Taylor needs to be fired. They're coming after me. And, and I already told, you know, and I had gone to the doctor for workman's comp. Scratched my arm all to pieces. Bleeding. She, was, she admitted to the principal she was trying to bite me. I mean, she just went crazy. Well, lo and behold, there's not one video angle that showed her hitting me. They, 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 they saw her arms moving, but no, no video angle that showed her actually punching me in the face. So it was my word against hers. Okay? Well, he, you know, that big man tack, uh, beating up that girl. We're going we're gonna to roll up on his house. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Of course, you know, they didn't know that they were sitting there with a seven mag and a shotgun waiting for him to roll. If you come through the door, you're going out in a body bag. I mean, that, I, that's, what, that's, that's where my son was. He's protecting the house. Yeah, okay, roll up. <laughs> you know, go ahead and roll up. Because if you break in and you're coming in to do your injury, you're going you're gonna to get injured. You know what a seven mag will do to you. <laughs> it'll, it'll put a big one in you. <laughs> it come out big. So <clears throat> I get back and, you know, and. This, there's a firestorm, and, you know, I, I have to take some discipline for not handling it right um, because I shouldn't have back, tried to back her up. So, I'm like, I'm protecting the other girl. The other girl was who was in danger. I'm protecting, but anyway, but here's the thing. What people saw was videos that showed me taking her down. Didn't show that she actually just collapsed to the ground to keep from being restrained okay didn't show her punching me in the face going for number three now it wasn't just like you know she she was going for the third one i mean you know and so there was because what they their perception was truth and that's the way it is in the flesh now Percep your perception is truth about everything and so we judge and we do and we live in the natural realm by our senses. And so you got people, we have, we even have sayings now. What? What are some of our sayings? What's one of our sayings? I won't believe it unless I see it. Or even this far. I saw it, but I still don't believe it. Okay. You know, um, you know, and that's where we got people. Now, because we're so trained to have information from the natural, well, you got to prove that God exists. Can you put him in a test tube and prove that he exists? No. I cannot. Well, then I'm not going to believe. I don't believe in, in, in something I can't see. <laughs> you believe in evolution. Hello? 
You believe the entire universe happened from a single point, an explosion from a single point, and everything else was slung in, in existence. And over bazillions of years, they formulated into all the planets of the solar system, creating gravity and, you know, um, tidal pools and life from this explosion, intellectual life evolving from nothing, which violates the law of something. Is it thermodynamics? Which one is it? You know, that nothing can be created out of chaos, chaos, nothing comes out of chaos, whatever that law is. Yet the entire evolutionary theory is built on everything coming out of chaos. Order coming out of chaos. Okay. So, and I forgot, I, I don't know what the law of that is. I, there's, a, there's a phrase for it, there's a terminology for it. But man has existed for now millennia in a fallen state. Where, where sense knowledge feeds everything. And because of that, they become more and more perverse. They, be, they intellectualize the perversion. Okay? Because, you know, we're just flesh and blood beings. We're, you know, uh, you know, like I was talking about, what we're dealing with now. Well, they feel like a girl, they must be a girl. You got devils running around. And they're not just getting on kids, they're getting on their parents. It, it, takes, it takes demonized minds to allow your child to be physically altered. Hello. Because they act like a little boy. You know, we used to call girls that were kind of, you know, they remember tomboys. Okay? They were tomboys. But then all of a sudden, they got to a certain age and they're wearing dresses and they're getting their hair done and they're looking and they're, you know, uh, they finally realize that when they're hanging out with the guys they've hung out with as buddies all along, they like them. You know, all of a sudden it's, you, they realize I'm a girl. <laughs> I really like him, you know, but instead we're having psychologists tell us to tell them that they're really supposed to be a, a boy. Okay. And this is all coming out of sensory knowledge. Now, think about this also. We have cell phones that are, that are feeding narratives and sight and all this kind of stuff. And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not just embellishing, but encouraging this thought, these thoughts. Well, demon spirits who hate the fact that God created man in his image and likeness after his kind, created them male and female want to, undo, to destroy the semblance and knowledge that God created humanity that way and replace it with anything perverse and anti-God because they operate as, uh, under the authority of their master, Satan, who hates God. And um, one fine day... He'll be in the pit <laughs> one fine day. You know, we'll all stand up there and watch and say, is this he who caused the nations to tremble? So if man is limited to, to his natural knowledge, then he is shut off from the knowledge of God. Think about it. God is a spirit. And that, not spirit. He is a spirit. Okay. Very clear. He is not spirit. He is a spirit. He is a personality. He is a entity. Okay? He is a spirit being, not spiritual matter or spiritual force, which some people try to relegate the Holy Spirit to. Well, he's just a force, you know. Jesus is the Son. God is the Father. The Holy Spirit is just this cosmic glob of God-like energy. No, he's a person. Holy Spirit has a divine personality. Things that are attributed to the Holy Spirit, that are attributed to God in the Old Testament. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is a person also. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. All right. Man's limitation means he cannot connect with God. Think about it. 
How do I connect with God with my senses? You can't. Now, we do it all the time as charismatic or word of faith or Pentecostal Christians. We went to a service and God was there. How do you, I had some goosebumps. I got goosebumps watching the Blair Witch commercials. I did. They got chills. They were multiplying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Grease, come on, guys. All right. <coughs> that was about BC days. Janie and I saw it six times at the theater when it came out. We saw six, Saturday Night Fever six times at the theater when it came out. We weren't Christians, you know? Anyway. <coughs> Man can't communicate with God. So then we start thinking, well, God is, creation is God. So we go and we look and we see creation, and to us, that's God. That's our interpretation of God because of a beautiful sunset or a beautiful mountain range or whatever. And so God becomes the image of what we make him instead of us being created in the image of God. And we have no access from our senses to know him. We don't know him after the flesh. And so God comes under, under the old covenant because man shut off from him. Man now has to be, approach God because of the nature of sin that's on him and his holy presence. His holy presence would destroy man just because of the impurity in man, now blood sacrifices have to be shed to be able to approach and, and, and to come to worship God and still no longer having the same communion he had before the fall. And ultimately, a tabernacle is built whereby God, because God hungered for his fellowship with his creation, but he couldn't fellowship with him because man cannot, man cannot handle his presence with his flesh. Remember, God told Moses, he said, no man can look on my face and live. I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and cover thee, and I'll walk by, I'll let you see my heart. Just look at the backside of God, Moses' face glowed. Hello? And so through a series of covenants and commandments, God attempts through the senses to reveal to man who he is. He's a holy God. Hits the sacrifices. You have to see that innocent blood must be shed and placed before me to be able to stand in my presence. Amen. Amen. The laws of the holiness laws, the thou shalt nots, which is a bunch of them, okay? There's a whole bunch of thou shalt nots, all right? God's revealing the things that the flesh may say are okay. Thou shalt not look on thy neighbor's wife to lust after her. Well, your flesh says, if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. I said, now love the one you're with. There's a road on the distant shore. You know, how many remember that? How many are old enough to remember that song? Yeah. I call it the um, theme song for the amorality crowd. <laughs> and it's got these, the, the lyrical structure of the, the song um, and the melody, everything, it's very catchy. It's very entreating. Am I right, Dick? Yeah, yeah Dick, Jerry? Yeah, I mean, it just, it's, got, it's got this melodic way with it. It just it, it draws you because it's just a, it's a pretty song. It's just full of the devil. Hello. <clears throat> I mean, let's face it, Stairway to Heaven captured a whole generation with the music in Stairway to Heaven. But it was talk about Satanism, belief, the belief that <coughs> after they went to hell and party hardy for long enough, there's a back staircase that goes up to heaven. 
We're finding a stairway to heaven. Of course, some of y'all remember Hotel California, which was about hell. You could check in, but you can't ever check out. When Alexander Crowley standing up on the, ba the banister with his 666 in his forehead on the, on the, on the inside of the double album uh, flap. When they opened it up, they had that whole picture of the Hotel California and the banister and the guy in the middle with the 666 on his head is Alexander Crowley, I think his name. Uh, this, uh, prof the professed Satanist. Okay. Hotel California is about being in hell. You can't get out. And, and, yeah, yeah, that's the Eagles' greatest hit, Hotel California. But it's a catchy song. Very catchy song. Okay. And so the world says loving your neighbor's wife is cool because if she wants to and you want to, why shouldn't you? Because it's cool with the flesh. And God says, no. And God says, if a man lies with a man as he does with a woman, it's an abomination. Didn't say that they needed therapy. Didn't say that we need to change the marriage laws. It said it's an abomination. Hello? And then it went on to talk about bestiality, and thou shalt be put to death. You got people marrying their dolphin. I'm not joking. People marrying animals. The perversion. You got to talk about, we're talking perversion. But the flesh says it's okay. Which is why God said to the flesh, through a means which they could enter into their psyche, into their being, through the law, written by his finger in the mount, thou shalt not. And if you do, here are consequences you can understand with the flesh. In some cases, they got the emrods. Never quite found out what emrods were, but I kind of just got the feeling it wasn't a good thing. I don't want them. Okay. All right. Um, there, there, were just, there were consequences, and so the law demanded a natural consequence because man couldn't know God after the Spirit. Though we knew him after the flesh, henceforth know we had no more after the flesh. Okay? Because the, sense, because the senses were saying, this is okay, this is all right. The perversion of Sodom and Gomorrah is, is well documented. And it came up as an abomination before God. And God said, I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to wipe it out. Which is why now the homosexual community uses the rainbow as their symbol. They're mocking God. Because God gave the promise of the rainbow he would never destroy the earth again with floods. Amen? Because when he did with, with, with Noah, the, the, the sin of the earth had gotten so gross, he just wiped the whole thing out. And then Sodom and Gomorrah comes, well, he's not going to destroy it by floods, so he does it with um, fire. Wipes it out with fire. Had a nuclear meltdown. And so the natural mind has degraded and allowed the flesh to dictate knowledge and more so and more so and more so and more so hello i don't believe aliens came from outer space and built everything okay when you think back now let's i'm gonna be real honest with you when you think back to the roman empire and how they built roads. There are Roman roads three and three thousand plus years old still standing. And the engineers from the North Carolina Department of Transportation can't get one to stay together for five years. And they've got all these engineers from NC State with all these computers and all this stuff designing it. And you go over there, and the Roman roads are still working. We were in Segovia um, back in the, in, the, in the 90s with the fam on a missions trip. We, we were preaching. We uh, taught in the Bible school in Barcelona, and we traveled and went to Segovia uh, where the double-tiered Roman aqueduct was, close to 3,000 years old, 
arched architect of block stone with another set on top of that to bring water out of the mountains down to the cities. It's still standing. They're tearing down Laurel Springs Bridge up on the Blue Ridge Parkway right now because it's been there since 1937. Not even 100 years. This thing's been here for 12, for 3,000. Hello? Well, the, the, in, the, the Roman, um, the, the Egyptian pyramids. See, man wasn't dumb, extremely intelligent. It, had, it degraded. It degraded. And we see that today. We got people in the high school who can't add two plus two. Here's what I learned that in the third grade. Why? Because we're catering more and more and more and more and more to what do you, we even have uh, narratives in the school systems now called ESL, emotional and social learning. And we base our education on their emotions and socialization rather than on reading, writing, and arithmetic. How they feel. That's more important than the, the other things. What are we doing? We're teaching more and more to cater to the flesh, to cater to the senses. I'm in full-blown meltdown now because you call me he when I want to be called she. If you're a boy, I will call you buddy, man, dude. I am not calling you she. Well, you, you're, you're being mean to me. No, I'm trying to help you, you, you demonized brain. So <clears throat> this first kind of knowledge is limited. Um, it ba and so because of that, it will now elevate man to the state of God. Man becomes God because what you think is the highest form of anything, your opinion, your thought, it doesn't matter. I am secular humanism, which atheism is the religion of secular humanism. Okay. Man becomes God. He answers to himself. He is the highest being. No, no one has a higher position in his life than him. And what he says is right. What he says goes. What he says is truth. I don't believe in your God. Well, it doesn't matter if you, well, it does matter if you believe in him or not, but if you don't believe in him, it's not going to change your outcome. If you don't believe in him, the fact that he does exist is not going to change because you don't believe it. And you'll find out. But it'll just be too late. Okay? And so, you know, they, they, they revert to atheism. Then they go to materialism. Or if they want to believe in a higher power, they'll go to deism. That there's this irrelevant God who created, but is external and not involved. Okay? And so they'll get into, but mainly atheism and materialism, um, there's only matter. There's only, you know, what, what, so science becomes the religion of man's godness. Okay? We look at the universe. There has to be life on Mars. Instead of viewing it that God created the universe and everything to center around his creation. Now, I know there's people who believe there's life on other planets. Da, da, da. Well, there is. There's a planet called heaven. There are people there. Okay? There are angels there. God's there. But God, you know, uh, if you were a Star Trek fan, you know, they have, they have M-class planets. planets. They're earthly, earth-type planets. Have, have the atmosphere like earth, and you can have humanoid-type species on them. Okay? And um, have all evolved at about the same rate. Isn't that interesting? Big Bang Theory, you have all these, these planets around the universe that all evolved at the same rate, in the same way. 
I mean, when, when you get into this stuff, you kind of think, these people are dumber than a brick. I mean, you know, but, but their mind makes this stuff up. So, um, but you, you're, then you become limited by the physical world. Since I can't get outside the physical world, God doesn't exist. It's, see, it's just as logical as a blind man to say there's no such thing as color. Why? He's never seen it. And barring a miracle, he'll never see it. He has no concept of color. He never saw it. It's not like Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder who looked up in the sun and went blind. Ray Charles went blind from looking at the sun as a kid. He could see before that. Okay? A fish might say there's, no, there's nothing outside the ocean. Because all he's ever known is water. Okay? So, to answer the questions of man's limitations of his knowledge, they are limited to the, certain, to the central nervous system of his physical body and its limitations are the physical universe and matter alone. So, sense, so we refer to that as sense knowledge. Okay? All right. Yet, yet, there's still a hunger in man. Let's just put it this way, for the supernatural. Hence, they ask the questions, are we alone? We write, we have horror movies. We have, you know, try to catch a ghost on camera. Um, you know, we have ghost stories. There is this yearning for something beyond. And why? Because the inner man that they cannot communicate or commune with because they've learned everything comes through their senses, is in their yearning for connection with the highest reality, which is God. And so man longs for that, even when they don't know it. So they will, they'll come up with philosophical things. They will come up with things to try to appease that hunger. God doesn't exist. There's no such thing as God. When you die, you die like a dog. That's it. How do you know dogs don't go to heaven? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, um, now I don't have enough Bible to prove that you know, animals exist post-flesh. Um, but it would be kind of nice to think they did, you know. I'd have some dogs waiting on me when I got there. I'd like to see again. But we don't know. I mean, we really don't know. It'd be cool. I mean, Bunyan might not like the fact that you ate him for steak dinner one night, but hallelujah. Okay. But the thing is, there is this universal hunger for God, even in this state of being sense knowledge ruled. So religions spring up, and most religions are all ruled by their senses. Yet one points to an existence of God that you can come to know, but you can't know through your senses. Okay? Um, science wants to give a mechanical existence for heaven, I mean for earth, to rule God out. Why? Because if, if we can rule God out, then we can appease the emptiness we have that we can't figure out why it's there. Because it makes no sense to the mind because you're able to touch, hear, smell, taste, and see everything else. But this thing that aches internally can't be satisfied. So what do we do? We inebriate the people with something. Drugs, alcohol, sex, entertainment to keep the mind engaged in 
physical pleasures to shut down the inner longing or override it. Because if people begin to yearn long enough and to begin to seek long enough, they'll find. Amen. Um, when they were in, in, in the other country, many of the people that were of Muslim uh, religion had gotten saved because Jesus appeared to them. <laughs> Okay, they're following a false religion. He just shows up and reveals himself to them. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, and um, <clears throat> um, let me see here. Science. Edward Cotton wrote in his book, Has Science Discovered God? The book is a symposium of modern scientific opinion that points to the fact that scientists today are becoming God conscious. Okay. As uh, uh, there, was a, there was an era where scientists, the more they studied science, the more they realized this is bigger, is way bigger than we can explain. There are things that we have no ability to explain because it's just too whatever. And our little theories start uh, getting springing leaks like a, 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 a dike on um, in Holland. Okay, what was that? What's that fairy tale or whatever? Stick his fingers in the dike to block it up. Don't remember. Okay. Um, he thought it may be in time that they would find God, discover God and prove that God existed, but you can't. There's no scientific experiment to prove that God exists. Um, he, he believed that the greatest benefit that science could ever confer upon the human base, race would be to find the finding of God and a discovering of the fact that man survived death. Well, through God. Okay. Science will never be able to do it. Man will never be able to locate with his physical instruments, his senses, the spirit in man or contact it after and it's left his physical body. Science has given us civilizations, vast natural knowledges, architecture. Um, but the most vital problem that man faces is one science cannot answer. How do I contact God? Okay. The best it could do is to step back and say, there has to be an intelligent creator, designer. Because there's no way this could have happened by chance. Okay? So, in the beginning of this series, we were teaching, we saw God's, uh, man's reason for God's, uh, the present alienation from God, the fall, his treason, man's treason. Man with his physical body and five senses can never contact God. God did not intend man, intend for man to know him after the flesh. The real man is the spirit created in the image of God with the capacity to know him and to fellowship with him. Man, as he came forth from the hand of God in creation, knew God. Why? Because that's how he was created. It, God breathed into that flesh, the breath of life, he became a living or speaking spirit, actually, in Hebrew. Christ revealed to us that they worship God in spirit. Man's physical body was given to him as a home for the spirit in this physical universe it was his earth suit. It fit him for this life upon the earth. And though he contacted the physical world and the physical alone world alone with it, he was through the spirit. He contact man was created to be able to come walk back and forth between the two worlds. He could commune with God in the spirit and rule on the earth and the flesh. But with the input guidance, wisdom, knowledge that came from God. Man could, could function in both realms. And so when he died spiritually, he became alienated from God, absolutely estranged from the ability to know him. He no longer could function between the two worlds. Since then, man, man whose spirits are dead, 
left with only the senses of the physical body, has learned the wonders of the universe to which that body can belong, but never the creator. You can see that if man is ever to know God, a new knowledge must be given to him. A knowledge that cannot come through his sense perception. A knowledge that man cannot gain by his study of the world. Think about it. Man has studied the creation and studied the creation. And I believe from the driving force of his inner man to know the creator, he studies what he created. But because of his fallen nature, misconstrues what he learns as being all there is. But the inner man is longing for the architect of all he has studied. To know and to be known of him. Amen. The creator has understood man's need and has given to him a revelation of himself. He has brought that revelation down to the level of man's senses that spiritually dead men might contact this revelation and through it come to the knowledge of his creator. So, I'm going to get up and get the piece of paper that fell without banging my knee. Of course, that's a little late confession, isn't it? Since I already did. And so next week will be our final lesson. And of course, the title of that lesson is Man's Need of a Revelation. So we covered the first type of knowledge, sense knowledge. Okay? Why must we learn to act upon what we have learned? <laughs> Why must we learn to act upon what we have learned? Because knowledge that is not usable is of no value. Okay? What is the source of man's natural knowledge? It is the physical body and the material universe around him. Why is it that all inventions that man produces cannot lift him above a material realm? Because the source of man's knowledge is based upon his senses, his sense perception, of the physical universe, and these senses belong to the physical body. <clears throat> they are only able to contact matter, and every and man's every contact has only been with a material realm. What are the limitations of man's sense knowledge? His senses are known only to the knowledge of matter. Every invention that he pr produces to aid his senses in receiving a true picture of the universe is physical, and only aids in the knowledge of the physical. Uh, what have materialism and atheism developed? Um, because of the answers we had before, that everything's known by the senses, man has said there's nothing in the universe but matter and in the properties that drive matter. He has said that man does not survive the existence of his body because there is no spiritual quantity quality in man to exist after the body has been disintegrated. We can see that such an attitude, for with his five senses to which he um, is obviously limited, he can contact nothing but a physical world. So what well, have people die? We think that's it. Now we, we get philosophical. They're in a better place. What do you mean? What do you mean? Now if you're a born again believer and they've gone to be with Jesus, he's not in a better place. They're in their home. Okay, they went home. All right. Why is sense knowledge not sufficient as an answer to life's problems? Because sense knowledge cannot answer the reason for man's existence. And until man knows the reason for his own existence, he cannot know the purpose to the meaning of life. Now we got people who get high on drugs and sit around and go, why am I here, dude? You know? Or they drop, some, they drop ads and start singing songs like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. In case y'all don't know, that was about LSD. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. LSD. This all makes no sense. That's because they were dropping acid when they wrote it. The Beatles, by the way. Okay. What condition of natural man keeps him from knowing God? Spiritual death. Keeps man tied to the only knowledge he knows, the material universe. He can never know God that way. Why is the only, it's, it's like you look up in the sky and you see a vapor trail, but you don't see the jet. You know there's been something up there. So it's the brush stroke of its existence 
but you really don't know, you really can't prove anything. And when you look at creation, you see the brushstroke of God's existence, but because your senses tell you that everything evolved, you can't really answer the question and, question and the quest for communion with the author. Because your senses won't let you go there. And then it'll explain why the, the, the sunset was bright orange tonight. There were certain particles in the atmosphere from da 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 da, da and the sunset at a certain angle, and you know, and they have, you know, why is the sky so bright blue? Well, you know, at the angle the sun's bouncing off the atmosphere right now, and the, the particle content in the atmosphere created that. And so we always have an answer in the natural for everything. They tried to explain all the miracles of the Bible away. There's certain bushes in the Middle East that catch on fire spontaneously. Long enough for Moses to climb the mountain, get up there, talk, have a talk with God, and then come down? Oh, man. oh the, the, bloody, the bloody river was from the rains that ran um, clay down into the river. The log, I mean, was, all right, here, how about this one? How about hell falling from heaven and catching on fire? Come on. Ice burning. No big miracle that the um, Egyptian soldiers, um, that the children of Israel went over on dry ground. The water was only six inches deep there. <laughs> Glory to God. God drowned an entire army in six inches of water. Horses and all. See, we're always looking for a natural explanation to something we can't explain because we can't accept the supernatural. Why is the only, what is the only way in which the need can be met? Man must have a new kind of knowledge. One that cannot come through the senses, a knowledge that man cannot gain by the study of the world. God himself must give a revelation to man. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you ahead of time, that, that knowledge, that second type of knowledge, is called revelation knowledge. We have sense knowledge and we have revelation knowledge. It requires revelation knowledge to know God. And I'll just give you a little teaser. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. He has placed in every man the ability to hear the word and have the Spirit of God speak to him and to believe by supernatural revelation in him that Jesus is his son he died and was raised from the dead, and God reveals that supernaturally. Okay? You will never gain it through your senses. It just won't happen. All right. Um, thank you all for joining us. Hallelujah. Next week we conclude. <laughs> next week. Next week. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll leave Sunday after church to go to Myrtle Beach to get in on uh, two of our services of our regional retreat <laughs> and come right back and go right back to work and uh, pray for me that I'll get Nathan's fence finished this week. If I can get that finished, that's my last major project of the summer. We, we got the, we got the post on the ground. We got the stringers up and we are two thirds down one side. Then we got to go finish that, go across the back, come up the other side and put the gates in. It's just, just nailing the stringers up, I mean the boards up, you know, and I'm using a nail gun. I'm not doing this. I don't do this anymore. Okay? The only time I do this is when I'm knocking something back out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe in hammers. <coughs> I believe in nail framing nailers. I believe in finished nailers. I believe in Brad nailers. I believe in staple guns, all pneumatic that you go click up, click up, click up, or the big ones you go shkaboom, shkaboom. I believe in it. Hallelujah. Right up to the time I shoot it in my hand. Anyway, I've told you that before, haven't I? Shot right one, one right in the palm of my hand. Thought, I felt like Jesus. <laughs> Had this nail sticking out like that. A, 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 a framing nail, not a little nail. A framing nail was sticking out of my hand. Right at the palm of my hand. I looked down and went, ah! 
And the other, other one was I, I hit a, I hit a um, knot with a, with a finish nailer, and, and I went, ow! And I went like this, and blood came out here, and blood came out over here. <laughs> it had gone all the way through. <laughs> yeah, like, I looked down there, and the nail had bent and come out because it hit a knot, and it bent and pushed it out. <coughs> anyway, and we'll be back next Wednesday night to finish up. We'll be here Sunday, all right? Don't forget the upcoming events. September 18th, Jessica Cap have the service sharing on the expedition from Turkey. 25th, Dean Tad Gregorich from Rainbow Bible Training College. Dean, and we call him Dean because he's the dean of the, of the school, uh, will be ministering in our uh, homecoming uh, church dedication service. And then we haven't set a date for late October, early November for the Down East Barbecue Fried Chicken, but we will be doing that. Hallelujah. That's going to be good. It's not going to be as big as last year. We ain't doing 200 people. Mm -mm. We're gonna do. We're gonna do us a little more pleasurable without doing so many people, and we we enjoyed. I enjoyed doing it, but it was a whole lot of work, wasn't it? It was a whole lot of work. Now, as we grow, so you still gonna do it when we grow? Yeah, we're gonna buy more cookers. <coughs> we're gonna train more people. I might have four or five deep fryers out there. People throwing chicken in. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you have uh, about 10 or 15 people chopping barbecue. I'll just supervise and tell you how to do it. I'll come by and go, not enough vinegar. Got to be. <laughs> let's get some more vinegar in that. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's receive our offering for tonight. Glory to God. You need an offering envelope. Don't seat back in front of you. Go and do it electronically. Go ahead and get uh, your, your cash app and your, uh, your PayPal up, whichever one you're using. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give. Thank you. You open up heaven's windows upon them, and you empty out blessings. They do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go ahead and receive that. Um, <coughs> those who are online, we love you. We just speak blessings over you. We say to this to you, uh, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon thee. Hallelujah. May you walk in blessings and favor and abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. So we meet again. Remember these words of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.